Good morning, everybody. Tia's back here getting coffee. Uh, we're in Adelaide. Uh, the last time you saw us, we were in Cactus Beach, just outside of a town called Seduna, which was sort of the end of the Nullivor. So we spent the next couple days just getting from Seduna to here in Adelaide. Um, it was a very long, flat, straight drive, pretty much. We did cross the continental halfway point of Australia. So we've traveled well over a thousand miles at this point, which is just insane to me. We spent the last couple days here in Adelaide just catching up on work um, because we were unplugged for so long on the Nullivore. And today's our first proper day kind of exploring Adelaide and the surrounding area. But we're gonna go get coffee first. Good morning! What are we doing today? Okay, so we had a really incredibly sweet and generous person send us tickets to an activity which I'm so excited for and I've been like waiting the entire time in Australia to do slash see slash experience so we're gonna go do that just tell them what we're doing we're gonna go to the wildlife park and see some Australian animals and maybe get up close and personal with them she is so ridiculously excited about this because she finally gets to see a kangaroo hopefully. And koalas and, and the little things with spikies on it. We have to drive there though and it's on the other side of Adelaide. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to show you guys what Adelaide looks like. Yeah. Adelaide is cool. Yeah, it's like really like quaint, I guess. There's a whole bunch of really old buildings and uh, like a lot of modern buildings mixed with a ton of churches. There's a ton of churches. Yeah, Perth was kind of like just mostly just modern buildings, but mm -hmm. they have a lot more historical buildings here. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It has like a very, it almost feels like a European city. Yeah, it does. It's neat. This is Cleland Wildlife Park, and we're rushing to try and get to the appointment area. And I think T is really, really excited about this. We're gonna go hold the spiky things, like those cute little, what do they call it, kidnaps? I think so. Okay, come on. So, I'll give you that one. Oh, wow, it's like a paste. That one huh? is basically like a meat smoothie. So this <laughs> is mostly actually kangaroo mints. Really? So really? kangaroo mints, some chicken egg, uh, and then a special powdered supplement designed just for echidnas. So if you hold it yet nice and low down, they'll come and <gasps> snuffle right over. <laughs> so normally they would be eating ants and termites, oh, but okay. about 40 to 50,000 <gasps> insects per echidna per day. So a little bit tricky to Whoa. harvest that many live insects for yeah. our five echidnas. It's over one and a quarter million insects a week that we would need to. So they've got those really powerful front claws. So that's um, mostly used yeah, for digging. Mm. So um, for digging and burying themselves for safety, but also for wrecking those termite mounds. Little Puggle will be just sitting there waiting just, for mum oh, to come yeah. back. And then if they're old enough, eventually they'll come out and actually start looking for food. Do you mind grabbing them? Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it was really the logistics of filming, so sorry about that, but that was so cool. They gave, she, our, the guide, Laura, she, she's so sweet, she gave us these little jars of minced meat. The kangaroo meat. I didn't know that they were carnivorous, but they were like these little tiny, really spiky cats that just wanted to get the food and they were just like lumbering around. They're like these little meatballs. They're little There's, spiky meatballs. They live to be 50 years old. Yeah, so the the coolest facts about the kidnas. Yeah, carnivorous, mm -hmm. didn't know that. They can dig straight down because their back feet are backwards. They lay eggs. They lay eggs, what the heck? Um, they can lift twice their body weight. Yeah. I wish I could do that. I know, me too. <laughs> 
No, that was that was really really cool. That was honestly. really neat, and they're Super all worth it. They're all they have all been rescued from bushfires or as like orphans, and they just like are these little meatballs that just kind of roll around and do their thing. They're so cute. Do you want to go back and see the wallabies? <sighs> yes, but I have to wash my hands because I'm just covered in kangaroo meat right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This is the happiest day of my entire life. This is a wallaby, right? Because yeah. they're smaller? Yeah. They're so soft. He couldn't care less about the food I just bought, but just super chill, just like coming up and saying hey and then just doing his little little wallaby thing. <sighs> okay, you wanna see more? Tia bought two large packets of wallaby and kangaroo food. So the goal right now is to find a wallaby or kangaroo that's interested in the food. I still think she's having the best time ever. How you doing, Tia? I'm so happy right now. Also, I did not see how big their claws were before, so I'm a little intimidated now park is laid out in different sections where all these animals are kind of just roaming free and they all have like people free zones and then zones they go into when they want to interact with people and either take the food you're trying to give it or just stare at you but it was really neat and it's really peaceful because it feels kind of like we're walking through the woods or a park it's really quiet and peaceful it is like a monday so maybe that's why there's not that many people here but it's not what i expected but in a good way I've just been telling Tia about the great emu war and she doesn't believe me that it actually happened. That sounds like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Australia waged a war against emus. And they lost, apparently, according to you. Are you messing with me? No, they did. The emu war, also known as the great emu war, was a wildlife management <laughs> military operation taken in 1932 against emus and the Aussies lost. That's ridiculous. Safe to say, I'm gonna stay far away from these guys then. This place even has dingoes. Tia told me that I'm not allowed to make any dingo jokes in an Australian accent. Dingoes look a lot like Shibas. Yeah, they look really fluffy and so innocent looking. Obviously you don't wanna touch one mm -mm. or get close to one. But I just read the sign and it said that they have actually were brought over here from In four, Southeast Asia. Four thousand years ago. I thought they were native. Does that make them native after that long? I mean they're definitely part of the ecosystem after that long. Yeah. But they weren't originally part of Australia. They're so cute. <laughs> just want to... Famous last words. <laughs> See the koalas? We're gonna go touch one in a little bit. Protect your belly from her little balls. <laughs> Stay nice and still, she'll just climb over. One underneath, beautiful, and one on the back. 
perfect. Yeah, they only eat eucalyptus um, and she's eating particle scum right now. So this okay. is one of the favorites. It's delicious, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, she just makes her smell so yeah. good. Plants don't actually like to be eaten. Um, they've evolved toxicity to try and um, avoid herbivory, but then mm -hmm. um, koalas just evolved a gut that was able to um, digest it anyway. It just takes a long time and they put all their energy into um, digestion. We weren't sure how that was gonna go, but that was honestly pretty cool. That was... <laughs> Show them. <laughs> they take a picture for you and... <laughs> Look at the koala's face. It's probably all blurry. <laughs> Her name is Flo and she's eight years old and honestly it sounds like weird but she smelled exactly like like a central oil lamp. Yeah, they smelled really, really good. It smells so good. I mean, obviously because of the eucalyptus they eat but it makes them smell so good. I just want to like bottle that up and roll in it. <laughs> in koala sweat? Yeah, sh sh that was that was honestly really really cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks to uh, you know who you are. But ben, thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. Thank you. Lofty. 2300 feet above sea level. That is 710 meters. Also, there's this lighthouse looking thing. It's a little bizarre. <laughs> I like it. Two for scale. Oh my gosh. There she is. There's Tia. That's pretty cool. You can see all of Adelaide down there. The whole central business di district, mm -hmm. which is sort of in this square like, surrounded by a park on all four sides. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. It's like Chiang Mai, Thailand a little bit. But with a park. Yeah, instead of a moat. Okay, you guys, we have a fairly special announcement. We got another postcard. <laughs> but this one is quite special. Here, take it out of the way. So in the time we've been catching up on things, we had this is one of the things we were working on. Mm -hmm. Tia made this postcard show. So this is a postcard of the Great Australian Bite that I made while we were driving across Nullivore since I had so much time to myself. Um, and we formatted it for a postcard. Uh -huh, found got a print it shop. Professionally printed and yeah. So this Australian postcard. Oh, sorry. So if you want this postcard, comment down below and we'll randomly select a name and get in touch with you mm -hmm. and uh, Mail it to you. Yeah. Also, all the postcard club people yes. get one too. Of course. We're thinking about moving postcards instead of one per country. We're gonna do one per month. Mm -hmm. And if you guys are into this, Tia's gonna start drawing all of them up. <sighs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> but yeah, that's what we've been up to. <laughs> We made ramen. Oh my god, it's massive. <laughs> Put four eggs in mine. So this is homemade ramen directly out of the pre-made bag. The finest pre-made bag that we could find on sale at Kohl's. Each of these bowls averaged out to like two dollars, so I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, that's pretty good. They did not have chopsticks here, oh, so. That sounds good. So, you guys, a lot of people have been asking um, like what our plans are after the Nullivore, what mm -hmm. our route is going to be through mm -hmm. Australia. A few days ago, we did do a poll. Oh yeah, on our Instagram and our YouTube, and a lot of you guys wanted us to stay in Australia. It was overwhelming. About 70% on both platforms uh -huh. said stay in Australia. So, we have a wedding mm -hmm. to go home to. Uh, Tia's uh, brother's getting married. Guess who's the best man? We're leaving Australia April 25th, so we have just a few weeks 
yeah so we have a few more weeks here we're going to spend the next couple weeks sort of like taking the great ocean road mm -hmm. and making our way towards melbourne um, a lot of people mentioned tasmania and we did really want to go there but we just can't afford it, you guys. The ferry to, to, take. to take Blueberry over there, which we'd need to for transportation. Mm -hmm. um, it's well over $1,000 US. Um, it's just not in our cards. Yeah, it? we'll have to do that next time. But we're going to slowly make our way to Melbourne. And if you guys have any like suggestions what to do on the way there, that'd be awesome. Because honestly, the Australians made our whole Noldmore trip and everything amazing with all of the different ideas and stuff. Tomorrow, we are going to properly explore more of the city of Adelaide and maybe eat some food that's not pre-made ramen. <sighs> You guys do make some pretty awesome ramen. Uh, <laughs> some great package ramen. Actually, I think it's from Japan. Anyways, um, we wanted to give everyone an update. Yeah. Uh, just on sort of like what our plans are for the next little while. After Tia's brother gets married, if that wasn't obvious, mm -hmm. we're flying back to Australia. Oh, yeah. We found a very cheap flight. So we're mm -hmm. actually round trip to the US and back um, for like $1,200. Yeah, so. yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, Thanks you guys for coming with us. Don't forget to comment down below for the uh, postcard. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next one. Subscribe. This is the uh, the Adelaide version of Shibuya Crossing. <laughs> Just because the of Chris scramble. <laughs> and we are scrambling. In Australia, my whole life, I could count on one hand the number of wild echidnas I've really? seen. Really? Wow. And you certainly wouldn't be getting. <laughs> you certainly wouldn't be getting this close. Um, <laughs> she's like, I love this. These ones look a lot more suspicious. <laughs> oh, it's pretty cool. You can see all of Perth, actually. Oh, you want to? <laughs> Where are you going? You want to spin? Oh, yeah. Hurry. What about myself? This just looks really weird. What do you mean? I just have two big bowls of ramen in the camera. I'll just leave for you.